Hey guys, welcome to my reptile room. My name is Matt and I am a balloon artist and reptile sharing entertainer um, with Jellyfish Entertainment and my reptile show is called Reptile Viking and I'm starting this YouTube channel to kind of give you guys more information on all of my animals that I bring to these parties and events and schools and daycares and libraries and uh, when I'm doing that, I only have about, you know, half hour, 45 minutes to do the show and tell you guys about these animals. But I'm going to take some more time here on this channel and go through each one of my animals and tell you guys all about them. I'm going to show you, you know, what they eat, um, how to take care of them, where they live, what makes them happy, all sorts of cool things. So I'm going to get started with that. And today... We're going to talk about one of my favorite animals ever. This is Turdy the Snapping Turtle. So first off, you might be wondering, wait, snapping turtles, don't they get huge? How can you keep one in your house? Uh, that's a really good question. It's something that, uh, unfortunately, some people don't think about when they decide that they want to keep a snapping turtle. I know when you find them outside, they're they're... You know, you can find little hatchlings and they're super cute. You're like, oh man, I really want to bring that home and keep it. And then, uh, you know, after a few months, you're like, whoa, it's it's actually growing pretty fast. I thought turtles took forever to get big. And then all of a sudden you're like, where am I going to keep this? It's getting so huge. Yeah, well, to answer that question, I actually have a 300-gallon horse trough that I keep my snapping turtle in. Here it is. Da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> All right. Whoa, here's Turdy the Snapping Turtle. Oh, man. Here's where she lives. It can hold about 300 gallons. And I've only got it about halfway full. I don't, I don't need to keep it all the way at the top because uh, Turdy here likes to crawl out and bask. Now I have a milk crate, you know, just a, a crate that I, that I bought and uh, got some rocks on there to weigh it down and this is where Turdy likes to bask. Got a nice heat lamp here that keeps it nice and warm. And uh, Tur well, Turdy's a little shy out of water so she tends to like to crawl up there when no one else is around. Um, but I've also got some driftwood in here just to make it look cooler. And also, it kind of gives her some exercise because she bumps into it. She's got to push it around and keeps her strong and healthy. But I've also got some fish in here. Um, and those are mostly just for fun. Um, yeah, fish don't tend to live in the tank for very long because, well, uh, she, she likes to eat fish. Do you like to eat fish, Turdy? Yeah, you, you like to eat fish. But um, this is a pumpkin seed sunfish. And uh, this is the only fish that's been able to survive in here for more than like a couple weeks. This sunfish has been in this tank for almost a year now. Sunfish is smart and quick. Uh, he knows how to get out of the way from Turdy here. Well, let's say hi to Turdy. Hi, Turdy. How's it going? Hi, I'm Turdy. I'm looking at you. Oh man, so snapping turtles in the wild, they're they're kind of mean. Um, they, you, you pick one up, they're gonna they're gonna be really mad about it, and they're gonna try and bite you. And well, they do that because they're actually really afraid when they're on land. They're actually pretty vulnerable. Yeah, snapping turtles actually can't. Um, fully retract into their shell. Their arms and legs and their tail all just hang out and they can't get it all into their shell. And if I was to flip this turtle over, you'd see that his underside um, or his plastron, so we got the we got the carapace as the top and the plastron is the underside and the plastron is actually way smaller than the carapace or the the top shell all right so this is a wild snapping turtle that i caught a couple years ago at a lake nearby and as you can see he's got his mouth wide open he's ready to bite anything that comes near that's their typical 
threat display. They open up their mouth, let you know that they mean business. But if you look at his undershell there, or his plastron, it's very small. So he has relatively little defense on his underside. But as you can see at the edge of his shell there, something had actually bitten a chunk off of it. And also his right foot was missing his toes. So they do have to worry about getting eaten by other things. If this turtle was crawling around on land and got flipped over, it'd actually be really vulnerable to being eaten by something else like uh, you know, a coyote or a fox or even something like a raccoon or a dog. So their main way to avoid getting eaten by other animals is to fight back. So they, they stand their ground and they strike really fast and they have a really sharp beak. Now they don't have like crazy jaw force um, it's mostly the fact that their beak is so sharp, it kind of acts like a scissors, and so they can cut, you know, cut fish apart really easily. And uh, really big snapping turtles might be able to uh, cut your finger off. Um, you know, there aren't really any any uh, studies on that. On, on at what size can a snapping turtle um, take your finger off? But Suffice it to say, you, you don't you don't want to get your finger caught in the mouth of a snapping turtle. You know, it might not take your finger off, but it'll definitely make you bleed and you'll have you know a nasty cut. So nobody wants that. But luckily, my friend Turdy here, um, I've been working with her for about four years. That's when I got her. I got her as a hatchling. She was I don't know, about the size of a quarter, a little bigger than a quarter, you know, like just a tiny little hatchling. And uh, four years later, she's she's really big already. She's about 12 pounds. Now they'll get, she'll probably get it close to 30 or so eventually, we'll see. But since I've been working with her for about four years and picking her up and interacting with her, she is much calmer than a wild snapping turtle would be. In fact, I can pick her up, I can even um, touch her on the head, see if she'll let me do it. I gotta be careful. Hi, dirty. She still doesn't like it that much, but you notice know, how she didn't, you know, bite me and freak out. A uh, wild snapping turtle would be going nuts right now, trying to get away from me or trying to bite at me. So um, they're actually they're actually somewhat intelligent, and um, they she knows that I bring her food, and she comes over here and she begs for food, and uh, she tolerates me picking her up. And at my when I'm doing my show, I can actually um, let people touch the back edge of her shell and feel those cool spikes. She she does really well at shows for me. She does a really good job at showing that snapping turtles aren't just these mean, scary creatures, but they're actually really cool to watch and do all sorts of neat things. She's going into her hideout there. Doing a little experiment with this pothos vine, seeing if it will grow in the water. Um, so far it's been trampled a bunch by the turtle. so. That's the problem with keeping keeping plants with a snapping turtle. Snapping turtles actually will eat plants to some extent, um, especially as they get older. But the main problem is that she's a bulldozer and she just rips them up. Let's see if we can grab some food and see if she'll eat for us. All right, Turdy, you hungry? Turdy, are you hungry? All right, I've got a little mouse for Turdy today. Um, I do have some pellets that I feed Turdy, but it's good to mix up the diet. And feed her things that she would eat in the wild, such as rodents. She really likes mice. And when they're small enough like this, generally just swallows them whole, but with bigger bigger things, she actually uses her claws and she uh, rips them to pieces and then eats them. There it goes. That 
it's dirty eating. Thank you so much for watching guys and if you'd like to learn more about how you can bring my reptile show to your school or event, you can visit my website at reptileviking.com or jellyfishent.com. But there's a lot more to come so make sure you like and subscribe and I'll catch you later.